Good morning. Welcome to the sixth Sunday of Easter. Kind of a tongue twister, isn't it? Let's begin with prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms on the hard wood of the cross. But you also got those arms off of the cross. And you used those hands to give us life. Help us this day to hear about life. Help us this day to hear about your spirit. Help us this day to realize that life really comes in knowing you and being filled with your spirit. So help us to hear the scriptures. Be with me as I try to make some sense and point in a direction out of these scriptures. But most of all, even if neither of those things really work, just be present with us and know when we feel your presence that you'll never leave us. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The gospel is from John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. It reads like this. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I'll ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is a spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of our Lord. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. You know, I always hated that. It almost made it sound like Jesus' love was contingent upon me performing. But I don't read it that way anymore. And I'm so grateful I don't. Because what he's saying is really not sort of saying, well, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, as if we have to keep our commandments to have him love. It's rather that he loves us. And if we finally realize it, we will keep his commandments. It's not a performance, it's a response. A response. A response to sort of moving into this world, into this life that's laid up ahead of us in a different and a new way. You know, most of us are raised in families where we learn certain habits, certain traditions, certain ways of doing things, certain behavioral things that we get from sometimes our parents, sometimes our environment, sometimes our community. What we learn how to interact with people, sometimes in the most dysfunctional ways. And sometimes in the most damaging and devastating ways. Even when it appears like we're helping people sometimes, really we're helping them, but from all the wrong perspective, we're performing for them so that somehow we think, oh, well, they like me then. Oh, please like me. And yet what the Christian faith says is you're already loved. I'm already there for you. This scripture is powerful scripture. It's a powerful scripture. Usually, to be up wrong with you, John is so ethereal, it drives me crazy. But here, I really love what John has to say because he says this. I'll ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. Well, what is it? He's giving you another advocate. Well, what's, he? what's the first advocate? The first advocate is Jesus himself. And so that since Jesus, who had to go through all that he went through, that we celebrated on Holy Weekend on Easter and now celebrate more on Easter, 
He's going to give you another advocate after he ascends into heaven. And that other advocate is who? Yes, the Holy Spirit. But he refers to him here as, this is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Boy, I tell you, in this day and age, that really rings true to me. The spirit of truth. Most of us struggle with truth because, to tell you the truth, there I go again, to tell you the truth. It, it's, we put our facts together to make our own truth. We're nothing but Pontius Pilate. What is truth? But Jesus says, no, it's the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth that comes from actually being connected to God. That something rises up inside of ourselves that we just know. It's not based on just facts. Facts might show it, but it's something that doesn't have to be shown to believe because we know it and believe. Isn't that actually what Jesus always asks of the disciples? Look, don't you know by now that I am the way, the truth, and the life? Don't you know it? But if you don't know it, then believe because of the, the works that I do. The works that you do are the facts. But they better reflect on the thing that you know. And that's what truth is. Truth is something that you know. Truth is something that you know down deep inside you that you just know that, wait a second, it really is. That God, even though maybe a lot of my life hasn't sort of given me the way I wanted to be loved by God, that God really does love me. And that I'm a creation that has to work from there to love others. You see, that's the truth. That I'm forgiven. When I go through my head and take the list and the litany of all the things that I've ever done in my life, I think, how could anybody forgive me for that? The things that people know, but even more, the things that I've never really let out and never gotten caught for. And yet, somehow, God really forgives me. And he wants me to know that I'm forgiven. Because that knowing that I'm forgiven doesn't make me go out and do it over again thinking, well, I can just go back and get other forgiveness. It doesn't make me do that. It makes me say, no, I don't have to live like that anymore. That I can live in a different way. And yet there's so many things that are broken inside of me. So many things that are broken. You know, I mean, I'll be upfront with it. COVID-19, the season of, as I would, has taught me so many lessons. I was reminded of that the other day when I was riding my bike. I mean, the gym's closed, so to get exercise. What I do primarily now, sometimes I make it a little bit longer, but most of the time I ride from my house down to the National Seashore. I go down Saxon Drive until it comes out onto Atlantic, and then I follow that all the way to the National Seashore. And one thing I am sure of, when the wind is blowing and you get to Ocean Walk, just because it's set on the weather forecast, the wind's coming from the north or coming from the south, when you get to Ocean Walk, you don't know which way the wind's coming from. In fact, you can sometimes go down there and if you look at one flag in front of one condo and another flag in the condo next to it, they're both flying in separate directions. It's like riding down in New York City with high buildings. Because it changes the natural flow. You see, sometimes the way we live changes the natural flow. And the flow of the way the wind is supposed to, the way the spirit is supposed to move towards us, we've got to learn to trust. And yet we try and change the natural flow of the spirit sometimes. We want it to work for us. I mean, think about it. How many of you have made, you know, COVID-19 work for you? I mean, work for you. You're not really social. You don't like really going out. Your spouse likes to go out and do social things. If you don't, well, by God, you got perfect excuse. We can't go out. I'm sorry. I don't want to be contaminated. I've learned that. I've learned a lot of other things, too. I've learned that in the general population that I'm in, that I encounter every day, 
Now, one third of the people that I meet have become kinder, but two thirds aren't. And I learned and I've chosen, and I don't do it well, and I really screw it up a lot of times, but that I want to be attached to the minority, not the majority. But the other thing that I learned was this, that in this season of COVID-19, judgment comes out real easily. It could come out in a way that you don't even see it coming. It can come out as I ride my bike down the beach and I see where the handicapped people can park, the ones that have a sticker. But the moment I see that somebody's pulled in with a pickup truck and they both just jumped out of the pickup truck and gotten out and pulled out their bicycles, I immediately go off and that all people who have handicap stickers, you know, there's something wrong with them. I literally, personally, the other day as I was riding by, I counted how many walkers and wheelchairs I saw that were out in the entire place. You know what the number was? Zero. But does that mean that they aren't handicapped? Maybe it doesn't. And why am I taking their inventory? Because you see, when you judge, you stand in the way of the Spirit of God. When you judge, you move closer to resentment, which kills the Spirit of God. And when you have judgment and resentment, the life that was available to you is destroyed. Jesus says clearly, this is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he is and will be in you. I'm not going to leave you orphan. I'm never going to leave you. I'm always going to be around there. You might not want me there, but I'm not going anywhere. But I hope that you want me there. Because I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me. But you will see me because I live. You also will live. Resentment Judgment kills that living. Hear me real clearly. I'm not making, because I see it in my own life. When I'm in that space, when I have to control, when I judge, when I'm making these proclamations, when I'm doing this, I'm killing myself. It's suicide. It's suicide. And it's not the way we're called to live. It's not the way that life gives. It's not even really even survival. But on that day, you will know that I am the Father, and you and me, and I in you. You and me, and I in you. What a wonderful, what a wonderful thought. But even more, what a wonderful reality. This day, that's what we're teaching. God in you, and you in God. You're not going to be able to squeeze in there with your resentments. You'll never even think about getting in if you have the judgments. If you tend to be unkind and you say, I got to look out for my own, well, to tell you the truth, you're going to walk right by and pass the door that will lead you in. And if you continue to have your life disrupted from the natural flow of the Spirit, where the wind of the Spirit blows in all different directions to where you don't know what's going on because it's been altered because of people, places, and things. Then you won't know the creator of those people, places, and things. Not the distorter of those people, places, and things, but the creator that made it available to you whose name is Jesus Christ. 
Today is another Easter Sunday. How are you going to live? Are you looking for the spirit of truth? Or are you looking to put the facts together to come to your truth? Or are you willing to just simply say, no, I know the truth that's in me. I really was created to do good works. I was really created to serve. I was really created to have joy. And I was created to be kind to not just the people who cross my path that I'm attached to or who I like, but kind and serve all people that cross my path. I love you. I mean that. And I love God. I really love him. And I pray that the love of God flows through me to you this day. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen.